Um, now, this reaction is not going to go on forever, because eventually we're going to run out of starting materials. Right? Um, as we know, batteries go dead. And that's the reason why they go dead. They run out of starting materials for their chemical reactions. Uh, in fact, um, even after, um, after a while, you don't have to run out of them all the way before the reaction becomes unfavorable. So as the reaction goes on, it's going to become less and less favorable. Right? Does that make sense? Because um, the more starting materials you have, the more favorable the reaction is. And the fewer starting materials you have, the less favorable the reaction is. So over time, what's going to be happening to the cell potential here? Yeah, it's going to go down. And what's going to happen to the delta G? It's going to go up. At least it's going to move to the right on the number line. So another question they might ask is, what we've really done here is we figured out what the delta G would be at standard concentrations. Do you remember what are the standard concentrations? One molar. One molar, right. So this is telling us what the delta G would be uh, if we start with one molar concentration of copper 2 plus and one molar concentration of zinc 2 plus. Um, and if we were doing a problem with gases, what would be the standard value for that? One atmosphere. That's right. We weren't working with gases here, but the circle for gases would indicate you're working with atmospheres. All right. Um, so uh, we might wonder, say, what would be the cell potential? if the uh, zinc 2 plus concentration is say 0.7 and the copper 2 plus concentration is say 1.2 molar. These could be any numbers. There's no need. There's, uh, even though we figured out the standard cell potentials, that doesn't tell us that we have to actually. We don't actually have to have to start with one molar concentrations. That's just a hypothetical value. So we could ask what would be the cell potential at these concentrations. Any idea how we figure out that type of problem? We So we need an equation. Yes. <laughs> All right. I think you're actually you are on the right track as, as the equation. You have that written down um, someplace. That's a pretty complicated equation to have memorized, actually. But uh, um, maybe you need to have that memorized. We do have it written somewhere. Didn't we do it today? I think it was from last week, actually. Yeah. 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 Y
So what's going to happen to Q? Turn to product on the bottom, so it's going to increase. Now, where's the product? On the top or on the oh, bottom? Sorry. Yeah. So it's going to so if I increase the numerator here, would that increase or decrease the fraction? Oh, it is increased. Oh, no, wait. Right? Let's take our time. So <laughs> as this reaction goes forward, we're going to produce more and more of the zinc 2 plus. Right. Is that going to make this fraction bigger or smaller? A fraction is one, one half is small over the whole, or small, big over. Oh, it's going to make it bigger. <laughs> yeah. Changing the numerator uh, has a pretty uh, straightforward effect on a fraction. When you make the numerator bigger, that makes the fraction bigger. Um, for example, who's bigger, one quarter or two quarters? Well, two quarters is bigger because it has the bigger numerator. OK, making the numerator bigger makes the fraction bigger. I was sort of on the right track. <laughs> so yeah, we just have to think it through. Um, well, we have to think through separately what the effects would be for the numerators and the denominators. Here, the numerator is getting bigger. That would tend to make the fraction bigger. So what did we decide? As we're moving forward, will Q get bigger or smaller? Bigger. Yeah, you can think of Q as telling us how far forward the reaction has moved. We already said earlier that K kind of tells you how far forward the equilibrium is. K tells you how far forward the equilibrium is, so it makes sense that Q tells you how far forward the actual reaction has gotten to. We could also say as we move forward, what happens to the amount of reactants? It goes down. But that's in the denominator. When you make a denominator smaller, what happens to the fraction? Smaller. The actual fraction? Wait, it gets bigger. No, it doesn't. If we make this denominator smaller, what's going to happen? To the, so we should actually review that. Yes. <laughs> So here's x in the numerator and y in the denominator, and we want to know what effects those have on these fractions. So as, as x gets bigger, what happens to the fraction? It gets bigger. So what happens to z? Because z is the fraction. Right. That's what we showed over here. A bigger numerator makes a bigger fraction. Right. So the numerator has a very straightforward relationship to the fraction. How about when we make the denominator bigger? Well, should that have the same effect or the opposite effect? It has the opposite effect. So as I make the denominator bigger, will that make the fraction bigger or smaller? Smaller. That makes z smaller. There's an inverse relationship between the denominator and the fraction. Uh, we could see that here if we compare, say, 1 half and 1 tenth. 10 is bigger than 2, but 1 tenth is smaller than 1 half. Making the denominator bigger actually makes the fraction smaller. Oh. All right, but we don't have to actually work out numerical examples every time. We can just say, um, the numerator here has a direct relationship with the fraction, and then the denominator has the opposite relationship. So it's important to know that increasing the bottom of a fraction makes a fraction smaller. That comes up a lot. A lot. All right, so the point of that was um, going back to here. As we're moving forward, Q is increasing. Q tells us how far forward we've moved. That's the intuitive meaning of Q. Now. As we're moving forward, is the reaction becoming more or less favorable? Less. Because we've already gone somewhat of the way towards equilibrium. Eventually, we're going to get to equilibrium and we have to stop. We're running out of starting materials and accumulating products, which tends to slow us down. Uh, if the reaction is becoming less favorable, should that mean that E is getting bigger or smaller? Yeah, smaller E means less favorable. That means E is further to the left on the number line. All right, but the point of this is I just wanted to say, should this be a plus sign then or a minus sign? Um, should Q and E here be moving in the same direction or opposite directions? What have we decided? Q is going up, and which way is E going? Yeah. So should this be a plus or a minus? minus. Yeah, so this to show that it's an opposite relationship. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't expect an um, uh, introductory student to be able to derive this formula, but I always think it's good to just um, see what the formulas tell you about the directions that the variables are moving in. The basic intuition here is that this tells us the further forward we go, the less favorable the reaction is. That's the basic intuition that this formula is giving us. With that, that is common sense. The further forward we go, the less favorable the reaction is becoming. So notice that we're kind of using E standard as our standard or our, our starting point. Um, and then um, as we change Q, that, that gives us the actual E. So this tells us what the E would be at one molar concentrations. And this tells us what the E would be at the actual concentrations that are represented by Q. By the way, 
So I suppose we were at standard conditions. If we were at standard conditions, um, what numbers would we plug in for these concentrations? One. So what would Q be? One. Do you know what the natural log of one is? So that's, a, that's worth uh, writing down in your notes about logs. The log of one is zero. Because this is supposed to tell us the exponent of e that would give us one. e to the zero with power is one. These two things mean the same thing. Anything to the zero with power is one of these two equations are giving us the same information. So let's say that we're at standard conditions. At standard conditions, q would be equal to one, and then this term would be zero. So then the e would be equal to e standard. Well, that, that should make sense. At standard conditions, e is the standard e. All right, so that gives us just a little bit more intuition for this formula. 